It was possibly one of the worst trading experiences I had ever had in my life, and it wasn't even over yet. So I have a story for you. It's a story of a trader that was on an absolute massive tear for days on end. It was an amazing streak, a work of art, if you will. He didn't know what a red day was. It was just green after green after green after green. This trader was absolutely killing it. And then one day he came to his desk. He sat on his trade station ready to attack and conquer the day. He already knew what he wanted to trade. He made a watch list that day. He went ahead and formulated plans on various stocks, but he knew what he wanted to trade. You see, during that time, there was a stock that was making insane moves overnight. You're talking about 50, $100 moves and more overnight. It was absolute insanity. The money was there to be made and he knew it. And he sat at his desk that day and he said, I'm not getting up from here until I make an absolute obscene amount of money. But on that day, on that day, guys, the market said, no, that's not what's going to happen here. The market said on that day, you are going to be my bitch and his bitch he was. What was this trader trading? Well, this trader was trading weekly Tesla calls on those days when Tesla was moving insane amounts of money, when Tesla was going higher and higher. And we're not talking about, oh, it went to 300 bucks. No, we're talking about pre-splits. When Tesla was up there in the thousands and just doing insane things, that's when this trader was trading these weekly calls. He had, he was just tearing it up. And he sat down that day, like I said, that he thought he was going to make at least $10,000. <laughs> no, that's not what the market said was going to happen that day. You see, that day the market said, I'm going to humble you because I don't know who you think you are. And we sat down and I started to trade and I started the day off green. Started the day off green a few hundred dollars. And I'm not talking about two, three, four hundred bucks. I'm talking about deeper in the hundreds. Not bad, especially for where I was at my trading career at the time. And I was like, you know what? There's a lot more to be had here. And the FOMO kicked in. And when that FOMO kicked in, man, you can forget about everything else. It got thrown out the window. You see, that few hundred dollars I had made was absolutely nothing when I saw the stock, the moves it was making intraday, and how I missed an opportunity by not entering a position at a level that I knew I should have been buying my calls at. I missed that. Forget about it. The FOMO kicked in and I gave into those emotions completely. So now when that, was, that, that FOMO kicked in, I'd entered another trade and I was green on the day. And now all of a sudden I'm very less green, very less green. I'm barely green on the day. I'm like, oh my God, I just wiped out so much profit on this trade. What have I done? I got to get it back. You know that feeling. And then I entered another trade on the day and that trade, guess what? It put me in the red and now I'm in the red on the day. And because I have now the FOMO feeling from earlier, I'm red on the day now. Now I absolutely feel like trash because I'm like, man, I should have just been content with the money I had already made on the day. It was good. It was good money, but no. I went and gave into FOMO and now the next one to come is, you know, which one revenge. Now I want revenge on the market because it took my money. It didn't give me enough money, took some money and then it took all my money. So now I'm revenge trading. So now I sit there and I wait and I'm looking for another trade when I know I shouldn't be trading at all at this point because I'm an emotional mess. See, at this time, I'm red on the day, but not horribly by any stretch of the imagination. It's a manageable red day, but emotions don't care about that. My emotions said, you are a great trader. All it takes the way Tesla is moving today is one trade. And not only will you make back the losses, but you're going to put, you're going to put on a week or two weeks worth of profit. If you get in, if you get in exactly where you need to, and if you hold on to the trade. So I jumped into another trade and then I went deeper in the red because I'm not looking at things objectively. I am all about emotions. Screw the charts. Everything is out the window at this point in time. So now I've gone from being green on the day 
to slightly green to manageable red to now I've dug myself into a hole and I'm down at least a thousand dollars on the day. So I was like, well, damn, man, what am I doing? As all of this is happening, it all feels like an out of body experience because I felt like I was seeing myself from up here. I was trading right here. This is my trade station. This is where I record. This is where I do all my stuff. And I felt like I was watching myself from up here. It's like, hey, Jesse, what's going on up there, buddy? That's what it felt like. But I just kept clicking the button. I don't know what possessed me. I couldn't stop clicking the button. It was click after click, buy short. Well, not short, but buy puts. So I'm buying calls. I'm stopping out of calls, I'm buying puts, I'm adding more size. I am completely on tilt, no questions asked. Jesse at that point in time was full on tilt. It didn't matter, man, we weren't giving up. We were gonna make it back. As time passed that morning, all I did was completely dig the hole bigger and bigger and bigger. A little win here, a bigger loss there, a little win here, a bigger loss there, and adding more size, trading obscene amount of Tesla calls at the time, or Tesla puts, depending on what the chart was doing, and what I felt like was supposed to happen, because let me tell you something, rules, plans, those are out the door. Who the hell are the rules and plans? They're just there to be broken. At least that's what I thought in the moment, because like I said, I was seeing myself from up here, completely out of body, just tunnel vision, 100%. I didn't know anything else that was going on around me. I sat at the edge of my seat. I hovered my hand over my mouse like this, like just really, it was insane. And, and, my, and my finger would twitch. It was possibly one of the worst trading experiences I had ever had in my life. And it wasn't even over yet. I was only down probably $2,000 by then. As I continued to break rules that day, as I continued to throw plans in every single thing I know about trading out the window, right? As I continued to throw out my foundation as a trader out the window, I dug myself deeper and deeper and I was down 2,500 bucks and I was down 3,000 bucks and then I was down 3,200. I was now down only 2,800, but then I was back again and down 3,300 and 3,500 and 36, 37, 38 until I reached $4,000. When I was down down $4,000. Guys, if you've been on the fence to start with a prop firm that trades futures, now's the time. Apex has 90% off. It ends on November 28th. I'm funded with Apex. I've shown you my payouts with Apex. So right there in the link, uh, right, the link is going to be right down there in the description and comment section as well. I had a moment there where Jesse came back in and he looked at the screen and said, what are you doing, Jesse? And that's when it clicked for a second and I was able to regain control. Guys, I could have easily blown through, through my $30,000 account that day just like this. I said, what the hell are you doing, Jesse? Do you make $4,000 in a day? Because if you do, then you're within risk tolerance right now, even though you're trading poorly. But if you don't make $4,000 in a day, then what the hell are you doing? And that's when I stopped. It was crazy. It was like something had taken over me completely. And all I could do was click the mouse nonstop and stare at the numbers with no plan. Deer in a headlight completely. And all I was doing was destroying my $30,000 trading account at the time. I was down $4,000. To some people that might not seem like a lot of money, right? And even to me today, if I lose $4,000, I know I can make it back because I've had some big days. I've had some big months. Over the last 20 days, um, 25 days, I'm up over $10,000 trading futures. So I know that I can make that those figures back. But back then, it wasn't like that. I've had some decent days, but $4,000 days? Not yet. Those weren't there. And I most certainly wasn't trading within risk tolerance. I most certainly wasn't trading within my trade plans. What the hell were those at that moment? I knew what I knew how to apply them. I had rules. I just completely ignored them. And that's when I realized I was fully on tilt and I had to stop right then and there. Now, what I did was I closed off everything. I took my $4,000 loss. I put it in the pocket, let's say, and I walked away from my computer. I walked away from my desk. I went outside into the backyard because I couldn't believe what I had done. I needed to separate myself from my platform tremendously. I needed to put distance and I did that. I came back, I worked, I did some emails, I, I chilled, I calmed down. 
And I said to myself, we're going to come back at the end of the day, in the afternoon, because even though you've just gone on tilt, you know how to trade. You know how to trade, but you've gone on tilt. You let your emotions completely control you, and you virtually were well on your way to destroy your account. But because you know how to trade, you can come back in the afternoon and take a look and see if there's the possibility for a swing tree and you're going to take it and you're going to manage your risk on it and i came back sat down in the afternoon guys before i forget black friday starts now and it's going to last the whole week and uh, i want you to take advantage of it massive discount on all my courses from the futures courses to the shortings courses to the day trading advanced day trading everything swing trading everything massive deals description and comment section go ahead and take advantage of that starting right now so i came back i sat down and i looked for a swing trade i found tesla again of course and it gave me a setup and i said okay this looks good for a swing trade for a call option overnight i said i gotta manage risk here i cannot suffer another humongous loss like i can't come in here and lose another four or five thousand dollars that that was gonna be insane at that time, right? I knew I can come back from 4,000, but guys, if I would have lost another five that day, overnight or something, I don't know. I don't know if I I don't know if I would be here talking to you, because that might have been the knockout punch for me, losing you know, in, in 24 hours, ten thousand dollars. That's insanity. So I sat down, I looked for the opportunity, I found it, I took the call option overnight. Now that call option cost me $3,000. It was a $30 call option. Took the trade, went about my day, the next day I woke up in the morning and Tesla was making an absolute insane move. I could, if I could have sold that call option in the pre-market session, I probably would have made north of $10,000. Probably at some point there, we were in the $11,000, $12,000 range. Unfortunately, by the time the bell came and all that good stuff, I had only managed to make roughly just under $7,000 on that call option, making back all the loss from the previous day, plus plenty of profit for that day, bringing me back. If you were to look at my equity curve in my career, you would see you know, a nice little graph and then you would see, zoosh, and then you would see back up, never to cross back underneath that zero line, which is great because I learned an extremely valuable lesson on that day. You see, that lesson came about just to teach me one lesson, and that was, don't eat crap, Jesse. Don't be an asshole. And make sure you always stick to your trade plans. Never give in to your emotions. And I came up with the extra rule. And that's one rule I've shared with my students. That's one rule I've shared here on YouTube. That's one rule I've shared with anybody willing to listen. If you start to feel the FOMO, if you start to feel even worse yet going on tilt, shut it all down and walk away. Separate yourself from your trade desk. You see, it's too easy to put on a trade. It's way too easy. Any Yahoo can do it with their thumbs on an app on their phone in traffic at a red light. It's that easy to put on a trade. So separate yourself, Jesse, from your platform and make sure that when you come back to your platform, you're gonna, if you're gonna take a trade, it's gonna be within your risk tolerance. You have a clear cut setup, okay? And you're managing your risk correctly. And that's it. If those things check and everything's well, then you can sit down and take that trade, but never trade, never trade from the revenge side of things. Always trade with a cool, calm mind. Guys, so I hope you learned at least one lesson from me. And if it's that, that you ever feel full more, you ever feel you're about to go on tilt, you feel those emotions creeping, you separate yourself from the trade platform. You walk away and then come back later with a clear cut you know mind that you can sit down and trade properly subscribe to the channel hit the notification bell and the like button for me and i'll catch you on another one peace